everyone welcome to my channel hello everyone welcome to my channel if you're new here my name is Jasmine I would love it if you go ahead and you subscribe to my channel after subscribing make sure you go ahead and you click that bell button so today as you guys can tell from the title of today's video I am going to be doing a story time and I'm telling you guys all about my trip here to the US from the motherland Africa but specifically Liberia as many of you guys know I am from Liberia why did I come to America? So if you don't know much about Liberia, you guys, we had a huge civil war that went on for many, many years. And during that civil war, my mother was actually killed. I ended up living with my aunt, my mom's sister, and her kids and her husband. My grandma was living with us as well, but then she resided here to the U.S. to be with her sister because her sister was ill, so she needed to help tend to her sister. So my grandmother located here, my mom's mom. Fast forward a few years later, she's like, you know, my daughter, so it's me and my sister. She goes, my daughter, so our mom, she goes, my daughter, you know, she has her two girls over there. You know, she got killed during the war. I would love it if they would come to the US. After the war, you guys, life is super difficult. Everybody is trying to get on their feet. Everybody is trying to figure things out. Everything is just a huge mess, okay? People's homes are ruined. Like the, the, the traumatic experience that you just went through, it's, it's just super crazy. And the sad part is you never know when another war is going to happen. So with all of those things in mind, my grandmother really wanted for me and my sister to move here to the US, especially since we didn't have our mother. Now, since family members were already moving here to the US my grandma and my aunt thought the best option for me and my sister would be for us to come here to the US where we can be with my grandma you know obviously have hopefully have a better way of life and honestly really just to get away from the war that could happen at any moment but obviously everybody couldn't come with if my aunt could come with everybody else all the other kids everybody would have absolutely been able to come but because we didn't have our mother alive and only a certain amount of people could come it was more of an urgency we didn't have a mom my sister was living with another family member it was all just things were just all over the place so number one the main reason why I moved there was because of the war the war had just happened and we didn't know if that war was going to happen again things were not really looking up no one really knew what was going on number two because my mother was killed during the war my grandmother and my aunt thought it would be better with my grandma who would be able to better take care of me and my sister all right, y'all, so it was finally time for us to leave, to start coming to America. I would never forget that morning. It was actually pretty dark out. I would never forget that. Um, we had gotten on this, uh, I think it was like a taxi, That's, but I swear it wasn't. I feel like it was like a van type of deal, but we still call it taxis, okay? So we got in one of those. Now, there was a whole bunch of us that came to the United States. You know, if I could say, I would say there was at least 15 of us that came from Liberia here to America on an airplane, you guys coming to the United States. How crazy is that? 15 people. If my numbers aren't right, I feel like it was 15 of us. It could be more, it could be less, but it was definitely a lot of us. I'm talking aunts, uncles, cousins, you name it. We all came to America together, you guys. on the plane to be honest with you I don't really remember much of this plane ride and also keep in mind this was my first time on the plane I was only eight years old never been to America so I just remember the plane ride being really long I, I tried a lot of strange things things I never tried before ever in my life okay I tried that day all I can really remember too was the fact that they had the AC blasting okay Never in my life had I ever experienced what an AC was. I was used to the heat. I was used to the warmth. I don't know what AC was. So one vivid memory I will never forget. The ride was long. Okay. If you've ever went to Africa before, drop it in the comment section below. If you've ever been on a long plane ride, period, drop it in the comment section below and let me know how long of a plane ride it was for you. So that's really all I can really remember that day on the airplane. We made it. We finally made it to America. We touched the American soil, you guys. We are here. We are in America. I will never forget how excited I was to see my grandmother. So, you guys, I just want to quickly include that my grandmother that I'm talking about, she passed away a few years ago. So, rest in peace to my grandma. I miss her so much. She was my rock. She was my everything. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I'm at in life. I'm just going to have a moment of silence just to really just think about my grandma real quick as I, you know, finish up this story time. Like I said, 
we finally made it on the American soil and all I could remember was just the excitement of seeing my grandma that I hadn't seen in so long. You guys keep in mind when my mother passed away even though I was living with my aunt, my grandmother, before she came to the U.S., she was my main caretaker. She did everything for me. She was literally my mother when my mother passed away. She was everything. She was all I ever knew, you guys. So when she had left, I felt empty inside. But, you know, obviously as a child, you would typically tend to adjust to our environments pretty quickly for most children anyways, right? And I was one of those kids who adjusted to my environment, not really having my grandmother there. But still, at the end of the day, I still felt that peace he's missing because that was my that was my mom that was all I knew when my mother passed away when she left Liberia to move here to the United States you guys my world just kind of was upside down it was just it was a big change but like I said I learned to adjust living with my aunt but still I always there was not a day that went by without me thinking about my grandmother everything that I know now about motherhood I learned from her she was so nurturing so caring so loving you guys the nicest person seriously you will ever meet and one thing my grandmother always used to do that I would never forget she always wanted to make sure everybody who came in contact with her was well fed she was always making sure that people were fed heavy ate today like I said so nurturing she also spoiled me rotten when I say rotten okay let me tell you when I say rotten my grandma spoiled me rotten and you guys let me tell you I love every minute of the spoiling anything I want my grandma would give it to me I was her baby I was the youngest of all of my mother's kids being that I was the baby for my mom I my grandmother also looked at me as her baby I was the youngest I was literally only like a year old literally my entire childhood basically I, ne I never had a mother but Thankfully, my grandmother, you know, stepped in and she really took very good care of me. So I was her baby. She spoiled me rotten, man. Spoiled me rotten. You know, P. Hey, that was the knee. She used to call me, you know, P. My man, I was, I, I was my grandma's baby, okay? And one thing that I really want you guys to know about my grandma, she was the most God-fearing woman you will probably ever meet. Everything that I know about God, the reason why my faith is so strong, I owe all that to her. Now that I told you guys all these things about my grandmother, you can only imagine how excited I was to finally see my grandmother after all this time of being away from her. So I was so excited, you guys. I was just anticipating every step of finally getting to go and see my grandma that day. Oh God, I was so happy. Everything that's happy, anything that you can think about that's positive was literally what was going on with me. Anyway, so I remember walking to the parking garage, okay? So we're walking to the parking garage and every step I took, you guys, just seemed like forever. It seemed like it was taking so long to get to her. You guys, seriously, I know I've said it already, but this woman was literally my everything, okay? She was the closest thing that I had to a mother. She was my mother. Imagine being away from your mom your loving caring mother right for quite some time and you're finally reuniting with your mother again especially when you're a small child and just kind of you know put that image in your head right now as I'm telling this story imagine that excitement the feelings that's just going through me at this point you guys so every moment just matters right now i just can't wait to reunite with my grandma again that's all that's going through my head forget the fact that i'm in america forget the fact that i'm now in a country that could possibly be better than my previous home my previous country i wasn't thinking about any of that i just wanted to see my grandma okay taking forever am i ever gonna get there this is what i'm thinking are we gonna get there yet are we there yet are we there yet y'all remember that movie are we there yet are we there yet no. We're going, luggage is everything, you know. Finally, we made it, you guys. Made it, okay? I am reunited with my grandmother, you guys. I run up to her so fast when I see my grandma. I run, I run, I run, I run, and I give her the biggest hug and the longest hug. And I just remember receiving the most welcoming hug from my grandma that day. I just remember us holding each other really tight for a while. Just standing there, just holding each other. Now we eventually left the parking garage. Mind you, you guys, when I came to America, Minnesota in particular, right? U USA, Minnesota, when I came to Minnesota, I came in the coldest month of the year. And probably the snowiest, if that's even a word, month of the year. And that is January, okay? So we get outside, you guys. Mind you, I'm from Liberia. I'm from Africa. It never seen, it never felt no real crazy cold in my life. I'm used to the warmth. I definitely never seen no snow in my life, right? 
I'm about to reality about to hear me real quick, okay? So we get out of the parking garage. If you know anything about Minnesota, you know that the winters here are crazy. They're insane. I literally came straight from Liberia, Africa. Straight from Liberia to a state like Minnesota. The craziest winter that you will probably ever see one of them anyways in the states of the United States, okay? I had no idea what I was about to come into. No idea. We finally get outside. And to my surprise, it is snowing outside. And I'm just stunned. I'm like, I didn't know what to really think, you guys. It was just really strange to me. It was really weird. I didn't know what was falling from the sky. Oh, I know. Is this thing falling from the sky? I went in this, that sugar. What is this that's falling from the sky? That what, what is this that's falling from the sky? I can vividly remember me asking my grandma, like, what, what is, like, it's strange, like, what is that? In a sense, I feel like I was kind of scared, because I'm like, that stuff is ready coming from the sky, what is that? You know, so I'm asking my grandma, like, in this timid mood, like, scared, like, what is that that's falling from the sky? Grandma goes, it's white sand, jokingly, you know, she's joking around because it was, I mean, the whole ground was covered in snow, you guys. The winters here in Minnesota, it's crazy. So the ground is literally covered in snow. We have snow falling from the sky. I'm timid. I'm scared. I'm like, hold up. What is this? So I'm asking my grandma. And you know, like I said, jokingly, she goes, oh, it's white sand. And I played it off. I believed it. I didn't know any better. I, I've never, I never heard of snow. I don't know what snow is. Obviously, you guys, later on, I found out what snow was. I know what snow is and all of that good stuff. But at the time, I didn't really care. I was just happy to be with my grandma. She said it was white sand, honey child. Then it was white sand. I was going with it. White sand it is. Okay, let's go. As long as I know it's safe, I'm good. So fast forward a few months later, you guys, America isn't so bad. I'm learning to adjust, you know. But it's still not home. There's no place like home, right? There will never be any place like where you were born, where you came from, what you know. Weather is starting to warm up. We got January. Now we're getting into Feb February, you know, March. So we're getting into the warmer temperatures, right? So as the month is going by, it's getting warmer. Now, mind you, I had no idea what summer entails in the United States and America had no idea. What I will say is that we were basically told this fairy tale story. How America is so perfect, you will never even see a fly buzzing around. Oh no, you ain't gonna see no fly. America is that perfect. Bugs? Bugs in America? What is that? There was no bugs here. Again, this is the fairy tale story we were told. This is what we fantasized about, you know, living back home, the greatest country in the world. America you guys I am not joking okay these are the stories that are told to us and I'm telling you I feel like these are the kind of crazy stories that are really told to any foreigner who is living outside of the United States you get told the fairy tale stories and you have these dreams of what America is like now if you're an American let's kind of swap places right now I'll just kind of make a scenario for you guys you've never been to a place like Africa before you get told all these terrible stories about Africa, how it's so dirty, it's so this, it's so that. They don't never mention, you know, the great parts of Africa. They only talk about the terrible parts of Africa, right? Which every country has a terrible part and every country has a good part. But they always somehow forget the good parts of Africa. Africa is basically this terrible place. This is the idea that they create for Africa, right? But kind of take it from that perspective of you thinking Africa is this terrible place. You've never been there, but you're thinking it's such a horrible place. You don't want to travel there. You know, you don't think anything good of this country. Well, that was what we thought coming to America, except ours was the opposite of what you guys think. We're going to America. America will be amazing. There's no books. It's, this, it's the greatest country in the world, even though we've never been there. But this is the idea that they have set for us. America is this perfect place on earth where you would not even see a single bug flying around coming in your face, honey. That was what they said for us. So I'm trying to get you guys to visualize, you know, what they were doing here and the stories that they're telling. I was only eight. What 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 are you gonna do? You're gonna believe it. And honestly, even up to today, there are still some adults back home in Africa and even in other foreign countries who are still believing these stories about America, how America is this perfect place on earth. You will never, you know, see a land like this country, right? This is the picture that they paint. Now, don't get me wrong. America is beautiful in its own way. 
just like Liberia is beautiful in its own way. Every country, every place has its own thing that makes us different, that makes us beautiful, that, that make it unique, you guys. So America is definitely beautiful in its own way. Now to make stories up about no bugs being here and to make it like this magical place on earth is crazy. We were even told that there was no such a thing as homelessness in America. Anyways, you guys, so summer comes, summer is here. To my surprise, what do I see? Bugs! I mean, I see bugs everywhere. I see fly, I see insects, I see everything that they tell me now I'm a year in America. Y'all, when I say shock, I was shocked. I didn't even know what to think because the people told me say there was no flies here, there was no bugs here in America, but they're perfect place on earth. It was like heaven. I'm just shocked. I'm like, but I thought no bugs were living here. What if people said no bugs living here when I'm looking at bugs in my face right now? They're all in my ear, all here, all there, getting all in the horse. Why did Tammy say there was no bugs here? Guys, basically America is nothing like what we were told back home. Um, long story short, people are being lied to. So the months went by, years went by, and I really, you know, started seeing America for what it is, you know. Definitely there's homelessness here, you know. Um, there's crazy things that happen here, just like anywhere else in the world. America is definitely far from perfect, far from perfect, far from the stories that they tell us, um, which is really sad, and I think that those stories need to be put to an end um, because there are still so many people, like I said, who think of this country as the most perfect place on earth and they are just willing to leave everything that they know behind, you know, to come here. I know people who are, right now will leave their entire wife, their husband, everything that they know just to come here to the States. Granted, Africa is definitely difficult. It's not easy, especially when you went through several civil wars. The the country is obviously not going to go back to how it was and if it does it's going to take many many years and a lot of effort to get it back to what it once was that could have happened in america as well and with somewhere like africa liberia we don't have as many immigrants as we have here in the united states america is made up of so many different people so many different cultures you guys all these people come here and they're able to build this country so of course africa is not going to be like what america is like america of course is going to be built if we have the same things that america have of course africa would definitely be up there on the chart as well right but that's not what we have so of course the living situation is you know trickier is difficult is not the easiest but even with all that being said, I don't think that it's okay for, you know, foreigners to be getting told made up stories of what America really is because when they get here, then they're disappointed, you know? Okay, your country may not be where it should be. Life is very difficult where you live, but understand moving to America is not just going to make everything better. It's not going to make you have like this picture perfect life. Like no place you move to will, will be this picture perfect place you guys. If you want to move to America, move to America but understand that America is definitely not this picture perfect place. It's just like anywhere else you have to work hard for everything. You know, it, there, there's definitely bugs here, you know. Um, I think it's super important that we start telling the real stories of America and not the fake stories. Same thing with Americans being told fake stories about Africa. These things need to stop, yo. Now, to be honest, am I grateful that my family and I were able to come to America? Absolutely. I will always thank God for that. I mean, you're leaving a war zone. Of course, you're going to be thankful for that and be happy. I will always tell God, thank you, that I, that my family and I were able to come to America at the time that we came when the war was happening and we were able to be in a safe environment and not fearing of when another war was going to take place. We had that assurance that we were okay. Although America does have its downfalls, you know, there's shootings and things that happen, you know, but we had this, at least we knew that we weren't in a war zone. But I do want to say that America is definitely far from perfect, just like Africa, Liberia is far from perfect. It's not easy for any foreigner coming here to the United States, uh, whether if you're leaving a war zone or not, you're literally leaving back everything that you've ever known to go to a whole new country. And it's, I can't even imagine how other people who don't have family members here in the States, how they feel. Thankfully, I'm so happy that I have family members here who I can connect with, who already established a bond, who I already had a bond with. 
there are some people who come here to the United States, you guys, they know absolutely nobody, okay? And they have to literally do life alone. They have to figure it all out alone. So I'm just grateful to God that we were not only able to come to America in hopes for a better life and try to give ourselves a better life because you have to work for everything. America, things don't just get handed to you. You have to give yourself the life that you hope and dream of, that you want. You have to work hard. Nothing is easy in this country. I'm thankful to God for his protection over the years, over my family, and just for bringing us this far. Anyways, you guys, that is my story time of how I came to the United States of America. If you are from a foreign country, if you're not born here in the US, or maybe you were born in the US and you went to a different country for that matter, let me know your stories in the comment section below how that went for you. How was life like for you when you relocated to wherever you located to? Let's chat in the comment section below. I cannot wait to hear all of your stories. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure you go ahead and you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and you click that subscribe button. After clicking that subscribe button, make sure you go ahead and you turn on your notification because that's going to notify you of whenever I post a new video. You don't want to miss out on these videos, you guys, because I have tons of videos coming out for you guys. God bless y'all and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.